The diamond color scale was developed by GIA and it's one of the four C's that really help consumers determine what is the color of the diamond. Every single diamond has a degree of color in it. Really just um, is incumbent upon the eye to be able to see that color with the amount of contrast. For example, when a diamond has more color against a white metal, you can see that contrast a lot more forwardly. We use a scale that rates the value of a diamond based on its color, colorless white being the top rated. The lower rated yellow slash brown color diamonds being the lower value diamonds. On that color scale, D is what we're calling a colorless stone, it's that crisp white, and Z at the opposite end of that spectrum is typically a, a very yellow stone. When I'm talking to clients about diamonds, specifically about a diamond's color, the colors that I recommend that are the most value forward are going to be, and the F, G, every once in a while in H, you can get really good value too. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit unique in the sense that I really want a white diamond. I don't want a lot of warmth in a diamond. Um, typically my clients still want to be in that classic white. So F, G, sometimes an H, sometimes an H is too warm, are value oriented because you're not paying for that crisp white D or E, but we're still in a very crisp white stone that the eye can't detect any warmth in with that F, G, some H's. I would typically avoid anything below an H. Some H's even I would avoid. So 50% of H's, I, J, K, anything down from there, you're going to have a lot of warmth in the stone. In the industry, we say warmth. What that really means is hints of a little bit of brown or a little bit of yellow. Something that when you put a white piece of paper against it or a crisp white diamond, you're going to see that it's not a white stone. Some people love yellow, so if you want to be in these more kind of soft yellow palettes, L, M, some Ks at times too, but L, M, N, you're gonna be in these really nice blushy yellows. Down from there, you're gonna get into a more bold yellow. If you have a diamond with a lot of yellow in it, let's say you inherited your mother's diamond, your grandmother's diamond, so you kind of have two options here. Do we just embrace the yellow in it or do we try to hide it? If you're going to just embrace the yellow in it completely, um, then optimize it. Let's pull out that yellow. Let's make the yellow even more bold. Um, one option is to set it in a yellow gold setting and then set some colored diamonds around it. For example, putting some canaries or some champagnes in a yellow gold setting is gonna really just pull the yellow that's already in that stone and make it even more vibrant. If you are trying to play down an amount of yellow, let's say you have an L colored stone, it's like this really, really faint yellow and you're not really wanting to highlight the fact that it has that level of yellow in it, then my recommendation would be to trick the eye and put it in a rose gold. It's going to warm up that stone, but also, um, you know, as diamonds, additional accent diamonds in that same um, color tone so that we're kind of creating this like more blank palette where everything's a little bit like romantic and champagne-y where we're really playing down that yellow and more making it look like it's just a really champagne look, really romantic look um, for your entire setting, that center diamond included being in, in that rose gold. This grading scale for color does not apply to fancy color diamonds. So we're talking the pinks, blues, even these canary yellow diamonds, those are on a different grading scale.